Hey there, Masketeers! It's Kate from Princess Mini here, and today I'm partnering up with my friend Katie from the amazing YouTube channel Over the Mooney, and we are both bringing you some Christmas in July DIYs, so gifts that you could make. I mean, if you want to give them to yourself, which I'm definitely doing, or if you want to think about gifts you could make to give out as holiday presents. And of course, we're giving you lots and lots of time to think about this, gather your materials, and make them, because it is only July if you're watching this video when it comes out. Now, Katie is an expert level crafter in my book. I, mm, not so much. <laughs> so I put together a list of three pretty, pretty beginner level basic DIYs that should not break the bank and should not be incredibly time consuming. There's a bit of a learning curve with one or two of them, so it's a lot of trial and error. But don't let that stop you because crafting overall should be fun. So now there are some Disney elements to these crafts, but there don't have to be. You could also make these crafts in a completely non-Disney format. The three crafts that we are gonna be making today are going to be a watercolor portrait that is very easy to make, either just very Christmassy, very Disney-y, or just completely a quote that you love that has nothing to do with either of those things. We are going to make a set of park map coasters, which automatically says Disney, unless of course you have another amusement park you love with some park maps, or you could make it non-Disney by doing road maps if they still make those <laughs> of a place that you love. And we are also going to make the simplest and easiest of all crafts, some gem covered Christmas card slash gift tags. And I did not put a Disney spin on those, but you easily could by com by either writing something Disney-ish on the card or by choosing gem colors that represent some of your favorite Disney color schemes. Let's get started. So the first craft we're gonna make today are these park map coasters. And so the first thing I'm gonna show you is everything you need to achieve this craft. We are gonna do a set of four coasters, but since I already have this one done, I'll be making three today to match this prototype. So of course you need your coasters. I have a stack of three here, and I chose these coasters, which I will put the link to from Amazon in the description box below. But I chose these specifically because it also came with these little cork backing parts so you can see like the front of mine and then the back so that way you know you're not going to like scuff up a table or anything with them then of course you are going to need park maps my first coaster that i made to attempt this craft and kind of see how it went was uh from hollywood studios you can see woody there at the entrance of toy story land you can see slinky dog dash alien swirling saucers and this is the building of one of my favorite disney rides of all time midway mania so that was definitely what i wanted to focus on but now i have a magic kingdom map an epcot map and an animal kingdom map so i can have one park coaster for each of the four Walt Disney World parks. And then the only other things you're going to need, Mod Podge, and of course a brush for the Mod Podge. And then finally to seal it, since you're going to be putting you know beverages on here, you wanna make sure they stay uh, nice and safe and not get dripped on and then ruined, you want some clear sealing spray. And this is what I bought just on Amazon and it works pretty well. And you will also need a pair of scissors to cut up your park maps. So step one of this is definitely going to be to find the different images and cut them out. And so what I did is I kind of cut for this first one, I kind of cut like a rough square from the park map and then put it on the coaster just to make sure it fit. Okay, I'm gonna start with Animal Kingdom. Even though there's nothing too flashy for any of the rides, Dinoland USA is one of my favorite places in Disney. So I'm gonna use this section and I'm also gonna try to include this super cool Mickey compass. So let me go ahead and cut that out. All right, so I cut just a square out from the park map and you can see it's pretty close actually to the size. It's just a little bit oversized, which I wanted. Got a little lucky there, didn't cut too much. But right now I'm just gonna trim it up a little bit so that it fits appropriately. 
So I just cut off little bits at a time, you can kind of see from the, the snippets here, and I kept putting it on top of the coaster to make sure that it was fitting the way I wanted it to. I made sure to preserve that compass and the Dino Land USA, and really got the whole area in there, so pretty cool. And uh, that's really the first step. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out areas of my Magic Kingdom and Epcot maps so that we can do this in like assembly line style. So for Magic Kingdom, I cut out this little section that shows Big Thunder Mountain, and it was really hard for me whether I should go with Frontierland and Liberty Square or Fantasyland, but because Haunted Mansion also had a really nice icon right here, I decided to go with this one. And then on the Epcot map, you can kind of see this is the crease where the, the park map would bend, but I really wanted to use Spaceship Earth because I feel like that was just the best icon on that map. So I'm interested to see if that crease is gonna kind of lay nicely and glue down well, or if there's gonna be some kind of problem, but I have uh, pretty high hopes for it. The next step is to take your brush, dip it in your Mod Podge, and we are going to cover an entire coaster with the Mod Podge. Right now, it really doesn't matter which direction you go in, but when we apply it over the park map, you're gonna wanna have a consistent motion, like say like this, because you will see the streaks when it dries. Okay, then you're gonna take your park map and you're just going to lay it over your square, position it how you would like it. And you do wanna kind of just center it the best you can and then try to get rid of any air bubbles that might exist. Now we're going to put another layer of Mod Podge over the coaster, but we are going to move the brush in one specific direction because again, when it dries, you will be able to see the streaks. So you don't want them going kind of all over the place. There we have our first layer of Mod Podge on. This takes maybe about 15-20 minutes to really dry enough that we can put a second coat on there. We are going to do a total of three coats. So right now I'm going to go ahead and turn my attention to the Magic Kingdom and the Epcot coasters and repeat that same process while the Animal Kingdom coaster dries. Okay, it's roughly 20 minutes later. These are sufficiently dry enough that we can keep going on top of them. Not very tacky at all on my fingers. I will say that the Animal Kingdom one got some definite bubbles increasing in it, which uh, really the others didn't because I smoothed them out better as I laid them the first time. There's a tiny little crease here. But like, if you're not trying to do it, with a camera, <laughs> it's a lot easier to catch those bubbles. So I don't want you to be nervous. I think yours will come out just perfectly. It's been well over 30 minutes. Um, you know, I wasn't able to get back to this right away, but these are completely dry. We're gonna do one more coat and then wait for that to dry and then we can seal them with the acrylic spray. And again, time to let these dry for about 20 minutes. I let these dry for about 24 hours, but mostly just because of necessity of my schedule, you could definitely have moved on to this step once your Mod Podge was fully dry. And I'm gonna give you a, a couple close-ups, but the air bubbles seem to have worked themselves out. There's just a teeny tiny bit of creasing. Um, the Epcot one looks perfect. 
and the Dino Land one, I think I was just a little aggressive around that compass, unfortunately. But so that just shows you like the importance of this is the one I definitely smoothed out the best. So making sure that you're smoothing it out. We're gonna take these outside and we're going to do three rounds of spray. 20 minutes later, it is time for coat number two. Time for the last coat. And now I'm gonna let them sit there. My spray says at least two hours, but I'm going to probably give it a little bit more because I have the time. And now that our coasters are 100% dry and sealed, there's only one step left which is to attach the cork backing. So again, I bought these specifically because they came with the cork backing that fits perfectly, no trimming required or anything. And you just peel off this white sticker and attach to the back of the coaster. And there we are, our matching set of park map coasters. I have to say that, you know, Toy Story Land is still definitely one of my favorites, but I think this Epcot one worked out beautifully. It's really cool to see the different areas of Magic Kingdom, and I do love the Dido Land one as well. Our next craft is really like a two for one because you can either make it in uh, the form of a gift tag where you could even attach it to a present or you could make it in the form of a holiday greeting card. And for this craft, which is super, super easy, pretty inexpensive and really doable for all ages and skill levels, you will most importantly need some gems. Now I got these in Amazon and they have sticky backs, which is why I specifically bought them. If you don't buy gems that have sticky backs to attach to the gift tag or the card, then you are going to want to also have glue to attach them. But I felt like that was messy and having the sticky backs was worth the little extra expense because these were very inexpensive. You are going to need some Sharpies. You can use any color you want in the samples. I did use black for the strings, but today I'm also gonna try out silver. And then you will need scissors to cut out your cardstock. And you can use any color cardstock you want. So I happen to have this color cardstock lying around. And from a different sheet, I cut out pieces like this. And then all you have to do is cut off the ends and you will get yourself a gift tag shape. If you want to cut out a gift tag from like Pinterest or something to use as a template, you could do that, but it's pretty simple. And then you can cut this cardstock up so that way you can create about a piece of paper, about yay big. So it's definitely less than one whole sheet of cardstock, but really play with it and decide the size you want. And you fold it in half and you got yourself a little greeting card there. So again, the first step is to cut out your cardstock. So I took my cardstock and I cut out roughly seven by five inches for the greeting card. But again, you can kind of play around with it and make it whatever size you would like. I just thought that was an appropriate size. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the top to meet the bottom, crease it, and voila, we have a little greeting card. Now, no need to waste the rest of this. We can actually use it to create the tags. So they use, these don't have to be any particular size either. So I'm just gonna go with what's left over. You might wanna use a template of some kind that you can find like on Pinterest or whatever, but it's really not rocket science. You can see all I need to do is cut a little bit off the ends and then di cut some diagonal strips as well. And then, I, yeah, I don't like the way that looks so much. I'm gonna cut that much off. And now I have some really short gift tags. So the point of this craft is to make it look like the gems or ornaments which are hanging from a tree. So the next step would be to actually pick your ornaments and attach them to the card. Now you could start by drawing the lines, but I found I like to stick them first because I can always unstick them if I don't like like the spacing or if I don't like the arrangement. Whereas if you draw the line first, you're gonna kind of be stuck with where you put it. 
Okay, gems are down. I decided to go in a little bit more of a haphazard, but generally speaking, up, down, down, <laughs> up, down, down kind of pattern. And now to draw the lines leading up to the top of the card. You can absolutely feel free to use a ruler if you'd like. Mine are a little bit straighter when I can keep both hands on the card uh, for the purposes of filming. I think it looks pretty good. Now, what you can do is you can draw little knots and you kind of start by doing a little bit of a heart and then you draw the ribbon bottom pieces. Pretty simple. You don't want to do it and you just like the way that looks. No problems whatsoever. Do you want to do a ribbon on each and every single one? No problems. Do you want to skip every other one? That's really up to you as well. And that's the basic decoration for the card. Then you can use kind of this space here to write a message if you'd like. I wrote merry and bright on that one. I will let you know I started with the and so I could kind of be in the middle and then wrote merry in this space, bright in this space to see how much room I have left over. And I did leave it blank on the inside. You could kind of write any message you felt was appropriate. On this one, hmm, let's see. There we go. Happy, merry, jolly. Pretty simple. That's the thing. These look simple. They look a little rustic. They're supposed to. They're homemade cards. You let people know that you didn't buy from Hallmark. <laughs> now for our gift tags, it's the same exact process of gems, lines, decorations, and then in this case, instead of a little saying at the bottom, you can write to whomever, from whomever. And then if you want, you can poke a little hole here so that you could put some ribbon. I happen to have a three hole punch since I'm a teacher. If you don't have one, it's really not a big deal. Just use some tape on the back and attach it to your present. But if you wanted to attach it with ribbon, a hole punch would be great. Okay, and we have our gems arranged in different patterns, different color schemes, just to change it up. And this time, let's try the silver Sharpie and see how that comes out. All right, there we go. I actually love how the blue to purple one looks with the short to long strings. And I really love the color scheme of the one at the top. And you can kind of see how you can utilize the space differently depending on how big or small you make your tag. Now I'm not gonna put a hole punch in there, but you can decide if that's a look you would want. And overall, a simple, easy, and not so expensive Christmas craft. And our final craft today is a DIY watercolor quote piece of artwork. So there you can see it sitting up. I think it's pretty darn cute. Obviously this one's Christmas themed, but I also did some that are um, non-Christmassy. You also need a spray bottle filled with water. I just used a bottle I happen to have as my favorite cleaning product um, and I emptied it, kind of rinsed it out quite a bit and just put some water in there. So no need to go out and buy like a whole new spray bottle and you will need a pair of scissors. Okay, so you are going to first print out your design onto your watercolor paper. Now, I decided to do again a mix of Christmas and non-Christmas ideas or quotes. So I liked Tis the Season. I thought that was really pretty. First off, we're gonna recreate the Tis the Season one. So we're gonna need our Tis the Season paper. We're gonna use the same two colored markers. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your gallon bag and you're gonna lay it on top of the paper. So we don't draw directly on the watercolor paper. What we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our design onto the bag 
Then we're gonna spray the marker that's on the bag, but we're gonna shimmy this paper out and lay it face down and kind of just pat it a little bit so you get some water streaks. Now this takes some practice. When I did this, I had some failures, honestly, because I didn't wet the marker enough or I wet it too much. So you just want a couple of quick light spritzes, but it might take some practice. Okay, so just a couple of quick squirts. So you don't want this. You don't want to put the colors too close together because they will run and it might turn into like more of a brown color. That's why I left more space between those because when you wet it, sometimes it will run like that. Shimmy this out, see how the pattern stayed. Put it face down, squish it around a little bit, flip it over and voila. Yep, you can kind of see, this is why I said it kind of takes a little practice. You kind of see how, where the colors went together. They got a little bit dark, but otherwise it looks super, super cute. If this had been a little bit wetter, it would have smudged a little bit better. That's what I'm saying, it's completely all trial and error. All right, we're gonna put this to the side to let it dry. And meanwhile, we're going to use our paper towel to just completely wipe the marker off of this Ziploc bag so we can reuse it for the next piece of art. Okay, I actually really like how this one turned out, except because I was trying to do this with one hand, I had to shake it too much to get the paper out so it did run and bleed. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this exact same thing, but I'm gonna do it off camera and see if that helps. Okay, do you have the attempt on the left? And then that was the first one. And then the one that I just did step by step a second ago while actually doing the actions off camera is on the right. And I do prefer that one. Now, maybe I would have tried to put a little more here, but I actually dabbed this on the Ziploc. I saw it was starting to run together. And so I took a paper towel and dabbed it and got rid of it. And so I probably could have put a little more uh, green there, but I didn't want this to happen as much as possible. So I really do like this. I would probably even try to bring the green up here a little bit more, but again, you just kind of learn <laughs> as you go. I'm still learning about this. I love this craft. Um, it's super easy overall. And this time I've already improved it knowing now that I can, you saw this in the step-by-step -step one for this, that I actually removed the paper after I set the design on the Ziploc bag. So, that is a great new strategy I just learned. I think I'm gonna to try to frame this one once it dries so we can see what it looks like all together. So for some non-Christmas options, this is the one that I just created on my own in Google Docs, just picking the font and, and centering the placement of the text. And so I did this one with like just blue and purple and kind of randomly putting small versus large blue areas. And then in this one, I did it where there was some pink incorporated in there too. And I really like both of these kind of reminded me of like cotton candy at a fair. So let's do one together, but we're gonna do like an explosion of color, like all the up balloons. I'm gonna let everything dry overnight. And after some drying time, here is our almost finished product, ready to be framed. I actually kinda of can't decide which one I like better. I do think this one is cleaner looking, but I don't mind the splotchiness over here. I think it looks really organic, so that's pretty cool. I do think this is the one I'm gonna try framing, however. And before we do that, I just wanted to show you this one dry, and I think I'm in love. I really do enjoy this quite a bit. 
and we're just going to trim a little bit around the edges so it fits the frame. And there we go, we have our final watercolor Christmas inspired frames. And those were our three crafts for today. I hope that you loved these ideas. I hope that you will try them out. Let me know in the comments down below if you're gonna try these out and if so, which ones are you the most excited for? And if there are any crafts you'd like me to try in the future, um, whether it's a specific style, a specific Disney movie or character that you'd like to see pop up in a craft, or uh, just something you've maybe seen floating around on Pinterest that you're wondering about, <laughs> then definitely drop that below and I'd love to chat with you about crafting. Thank you again so much for watching. Don't forget to go watch Katie's video immediately if you have not done so already, and I'll see you in the comments over there as well. I'll see you real soon.